Hamvention 2023 and El Cara catches up to Dr. Jack Nielsen of Compact Tenna. I'm KY4 BDP Brian, and I'm here today with Dr. Jack Nielsen. And uh, Dr. Jack, we've uh, interviewed you a time or two, and we've had a chance to review and use several of your antennas. Um, we always want to come by the booth and get a feel for what is it that you're trying to get, what message are you trying to get out this, uh, this time around? Well, it's always nice to talk about something new. And I want to thank you, Brian and Chris and Elkar and everybody. You do such a great job and you've got so many increased followers. It's just wonderful. So today we're just going to focus on what's really new. And that was the QST review in August, in August. of last year. Mm -hmm. And what was that review on? It was on the newer 2M 440 plus this is the 2m 440 plus the nine inch version basically it's the 2m 440 which has been around for a while with some additional db gain and it accomplishes that with a slight height because you're along the exponential curve of the increased gain from exponential to linear to logarithmic it also has an even flatter swr uh, and, 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 and it works both really well for, uh, amazingly well for uh, both mobile and base station application. So the review was in the August, again, QST. QST. Yep, uh, uh, August uh, 2022, page 49. And what did they do with it? Well, you know what, they did a wonderful job. What a, what a great uh, editor and a great magazine. They tested it on both the mobile application as well as base, base station, station application. Yes, with the ground plane counterpoise right. that I optimized. Sure, there are some out there, all right? But I wanted to have one that was optimized so that you get all the checks good on SWR as well as pattern, which lends to performance, mm -hmm. part of it, okay? On all bands, VHF and UHF, including 220. So you had to get the exact length, the exact dimensions, uh, the right angle, all of that important. So what did they find? What did they find with this antenna? Well, they tested it in uh, analog communications, right. voice, digital, all right? Um, they tested it, like I said, mobile and base station. And, and they even tested it while, while driving around, doing satellite communication while driving with the vehicle. Huh. Because again, they wanted to test all the various aspects of this technology, yeah. this new patented technology where you know, you get you reduce loss by, uh, by 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 incorporating the matching into the radiating component of the antenna itself, uh -huh. rather than separate matching components that can cause resistive loss as well as radiation signal loss that tends to get grounded out. So that was one of the ways you get a small antenna finally in this world that works well. I mean, that, that was the goal, as we sure. talked about before. We wanted a small antenna that allowed you to get in and out of parking garages right. that was at least close to the performance of full-size antennas. Mm -hmm. This has never been done, because when you take standard technology and you shorten it, you do many bad things. But a few of them are you decrease efficiency right. and gain. A lot of people think that's the same. We antenna engineers know it's not. But you decrease both of those. Okay. And then you decrease bandwidth as well. But see... This is not made of wire. This is made of sheets of metal in a somewhat spiral modified Tesla coil kind of a thing, creating a magnetic field resonator. So you get a stronger electric component and a stronger magnetic field component mm. than you would think. Anyway, more description of that is on my website, compactenna.com. Right. So what did they find? They, they, they knew also that it had a very hemispherical pattern, theoretically, and it has diverse EM field. So it has elliptical polarization. Why is that important? Well, vertical polarization versus horizontal. If it's elliptical, you're getting both. Exactly, because it's a phase delay kind of a thing. Okay, and that's important because when we test gain on antenna, we always used to look at DBI mm -hmm. or DBD. And what we're talking about is particularly the vertical polarization in a near line of sight um, uh, uh, type of uh, uh, antenna range, mm -hmm. you know, or an anagoic chamber, you know, or a vehicle turntable kind of a thing. Right. And those are valuable figures. But we have found increasingly, and, and I, I really started talking a lot about this about 25 years ago, that when you're in the real world obstructed environment, mm -hmm. dynamic obstructed environment, 
things happen to the radio wave. You're not line of sight anymore. Right. You know, you're switching polarizations, reflections, refractions, all these kind of things, right? So, so pattern becomes important. That's why a lot of times with a quarter wave, you're better off with that than a high gain antenna on your mobile if you're down in the valley or a base station, because mm -hmm. the really high gain antenna shoots the signal right into the hill right into the, the hill, hmm. whereas the quarter wave can get you up and above. Mm -hmm. So this, um, when, you when you test the gain, what is the gain? It's 5 dB MEG, that's the new term, dB mean effective gain. And, and what they're doing is they're saying, okay, you take a quarter wave on a vehicle or, or whatever, right. a quarter wave, you drive around, test at many different locations, behind buildings, you know, urban environment, down in valleys, all these things, and then you compare it with say standard technology, high gain antenna, this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, what's wonderful is this turned out, this visionary concept turned out, not only does it have near the performance of the full size antennas, often a better performance. One example is if you did get into the parking garage yeah. and you put your tall antenna back on, you actually get better performance on this than the tall antenna because you're in a heavily instructed, in obstructed environment. Right. So they drove around because they said, oh, so theoretically this has a hemispheric pattern for an Omni with elliptical polarization to take care of the Faraday polarization shifts in the ionosphere, right, for satellite communication. Does that mean we don't necessarily have to have a beam and keep aiming it around or we have to go to two different antennas on the vehicle, a high gain one for near the horizon right. and then another uh, special circularly polarized for more straight up? Ryan, they drove around and they worked the International Space Station with this antenna while they were driving. Huh. And then they went to ham radio Oscar satellites and they worked them as well. Uh -huh. So they gave it a very nice review. And then they also tested it with base station. Right. They only had it about that high off the ground. <laughs> and they basically said, listen, finally, if you want a small antenna and you don't want compromise, yeah. this is it, both mobile and for base station, for a small, whether it's in the attic, a lot, a lot of people report to me they have better performance with that in an mm -hmm. attic than they do outside, or outside because it is so small. Right, right. I mean, one of the things that's always been um, a feature of this is certainly the size, but the other side of it was uh, the ability to, we're in a rural area when we do most of our tests, we're not in cities, buildings, underground parking or anything, but we have a lot of hills and we have a lot of mountains. And in that part of Eastern Kentucky, uh, we just ran a gravel rally and uh, our northernmost station to call in cars that are coming in is heavily obstructed, both by the hills and valleys of that mountain and trying to get back to net control. We tried uh, GP3s and other types of omnidirectional antennas and they work up to a point, but when we utilized a configuration similar to this, which was the micro beam in this case, but similar in configuration to this, uh, it was able to cut through better, give us better sensitivity on the receive, and we got into the repeater more easily with that antenna than an antenna that you might say, well, you know, uh, a regular Yagi maybe, or, or an Omni like the, the GP3 that we were testing with. So we were really impressed by, with this small form factor, how well it was able to get into the repeater many miles away, heavily obstructed through trees, forest, foliation, and all that stuff. Yes, and uh, that was excellent. I really enjoy your videos, uh, Chris and, and Brian. Uh, that rally video was really exciting, actually. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also took this particular antenna and you drove around in all of these hills and valleys and mountains and stuff, and, and, and you checked the, the uh, APRS connectivity mm -hmm. and found it was really consistent in being yep. able to work. Tell me about that. So we have a really nice repeater location and the APRS is pretty high up on that tower. And then the mountain itself that it's on is about, it, is about uh, I think uh, average above uh, average terrain is, is probably 150, but the mountain itself puts it up about 1300 feet. I can go all the way around Lake Cumberland where we are stationed or where we're headquartered. And we can, from an APRS standpoint, we can ping that APRS digipeter all the way around the lake with the nine inch version that we tested. And it's, again, such a small form factor, you would wonder if it had problems getting out. 
So even, we never see that. So even though the repeater uh, a tower location is high, you yeah. still are having a lot of obstructions in all those there's areas. There's going to be trees. There's going to be cuts through uh, small hills and things like that. Yes. And we were still able to ping through an APRS st uh, setup well, just as one measure. That, that, that's actually okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, the, as much as what what is really key about this technology is when you're talking voice analog, mm -hmm. whether it's simplex or repeater, you know those severe flutter drops mm -hmm. that you get that make antennas even unusable that have high gain. This diminishes the flutter substantially, mm -hmm. and that's what both hobbyists as well as uh, the, the the professionals, as it were, uh, are reporting. Um, uh, even with the LMR that I developed off of this technology mm -hmm. for land mobile radio, uh, government and commercial, they're finding the right. same thing. And your LMR is, is I'm not sure which one this, this one, one, this one here, right here or there, right there. This does 900. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. Oh, so seven, we're, eight, not nine, we're not talking just VHF and UHF. Now you're talking about, uh, 900 in one point. Uh, no, 750 to 960. 750 to 960. Yeah, but also the 150 to 162. Right. Actually, all the way from 136 to 174, but particularly focused there, which is where most of the activity right. is. Um, also very good at 168 area and, 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 and that area. There's some work there. Um, but, um, but, but, but also the UHF, all the way from um, uh, 480 to 512. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it covers all of those uh, government bands. So it can bands. be, not only can it hit those government bands, but you could use it for GMRS. Yes, phenomenal at GMRS. Yeah. That's the recommendation. You know, always when you want to give the best recommendation, you always try to say, well, um, you know, dedicated radios, Dedicated bands, dedicated antennas. And yeah, that's the best. Sure. Yeah. Now, hams, sometimes a little bit more frugal minded, they'll try to squeeze some extra operation out of yep. some of the antennas and and they report that it works. And well, that's not surprising. But yeah, for GMRS, you can't beat that. Well, and the reason I even bring that up is with an antenna similarly mounted like this, maybe on the eve of your house or something like that, you've got a farm or a ranch and you're using GMRS to communicate with ranch hands, your family back at the uh, house, whatever you need to do. This mounted and then a GMRS radio out in the field is easy for the, the average person to set up. And of There's course, the, nothing the GMRS uh, license is just, you know, go pay for it. $35 and you're done. So you've got good communications with an antenna. Like really this. It's, good. It's Actually, not an eyesore. You don't have to set up a tower. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's not even a compromise. Right. At GMRS, at the 400 megahertz frequencies, which is good because at those frequencies, you know, uh, the higher in frequency you go, you know, the, 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 the more attenuated the signal overall, so you need gusto. No, this at 400, no, it's not even uh, a compromise. Mm -hmm. It's the best. Right. It's really, really good. And I think sometimes we really just focus so much on just regular, what we call regular ham bands. But Chris and I like to bring in the fact that, you know, a lot of people start with GMRS, and this would be a good potential uh, starting point for a customer. Mm -hmm. It's the elite. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah, it's got everything built into it. The magnetic field resonator, um, a, 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 a lot going on there at 400 odd megahertz. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, diverse electric magnetic field. I'll say one more thing, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. But boy, it's a great hamvention. I hear it's record breaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is like, um, like on my website, a gentleman who owns a Tesla vehicle. He, he said that he was trying to operate a repeater with standard antenna technology only eight miles away, and he couldn't. And that was even with the vehicle turned off. Wow. Okay. And, and it's all because of the electric noise. But mind you, it isn't just the electric vehicles or the hybrid vehicles. There's a lot of electrical noise being generated increasingly by gas-powered yeah. vehicles with all their electronics as well. Sure. A lot of people often have to move their antennas to the back simply to get away from the noise because it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And some radios are much better than others in that regard. Right. But frankly, he put this antenna on, no problem. Now, why is that? Well, as I mentioned, not only is the electric field stronger than you would anticipate in a short antenna, the magnetic field resonator makes it particularly substantially strong in the magnetic field. Now, why is that important? Well, we know about magnetic loops. Well, yeah, they're very inefficient antennas, but uh, when it comes to HF, okay, they can be really good if you've got noise problems. Mm. And noise problems are very common in the near field. We're talking on HF frequencies, 15 feet, 50 feet, that kind of a thing. You do the calculation. Um, and and, and, and um, 
And, and that's because of uh, man-made equipment that creates electric right. noise, which is typically in the vertical polarization, but also typically in the electric field. Mm -hmm. So let's come back to this. If it's a substantial magnetic field, well, then all that noise he was getting from his Tesla, mm -hmm. okay, um, then, 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 then what happens is, is, is because that is in the near field at the two meter frequency, it's substantially reduced compared to the antennas that are very focused on the standard whip electric field kind right. of a thing. It's really cool stuff. It's totally different. Well, we've, we've enjoyed uh, uh, reviewing the antennas, putting them out there in the real world. Uh, the rally is just one example of that. And we appreciate all the time and effort that you, uh, that you put into this and certainly allowing uh, our channel to be able to interview you and come to know you and so forth. So Dr. Jack, we want to go ahead and close it here. I'm KY4BDP for Dr. Jack Nielsen, K8NDL. Get this August edition of QST. We have a lot of people that go, oh, well, that, those antennas can't be that good. Read the review in QST. And you know what, Brian, if I make, uh, make a final close, uh, on my website, compactenda.com, at the top of the homepage, the article is there. There's a link for that? There, well, the actual article is oh, okay. right on there, by permission from nice. the ARRL. 73, everybody. Thank you.